something that I read and uh, or something that kind of gets me kind of wound up a little bit. And uh, so I had a little bit of both in going through the Kiplinger letter that just came out. And um, one of the things I thought that was really cool, back page when you get into the technology section, and I always love when I see this, they're actually talking about machine tools. So anytime people talk manufacturing technology in the mainstream, I always think it's pretty exciting and pretty cool. The thing that's actually in there is something we've been involved with for a while. They're talking about the focus that uh, now, Uncle Sam, in their words, the government's focusing in on machine tools and, of course, the importance of that. And we've been working with the folks at DOD um, and also the DOE Department of Energy, especially the bright guys and gals over at Oak Ridge National Labs. They're really focused in on the core importance of machine tools and the whole manufacturing economy defense energy space for the United States. And, uh, you know, it's interesting. They, they point out some of the cool things that are going on in leveraging uh, techniques like in 3D capability and actually building the bases. And so they're using, as you, some of you may know, some hard creek kind of solutions and being able to then actually use 3D type processes to build those bases. Because, you know, frankly, over the last couple of decades, we've gone from what they're saying we found it to be quite true as well. As we look at this, you know, almost a thousand, over 700 uh, companies that were able to make large weldments and castings to the point now where you've got, you know, barely less than half of that. And so you need to be able to have these things made. And, you know, one of the things that comes out of that when you look at it is interesting. How did you get to that position anyway, where the U.S. gave up an enormous position in the marketplace for being able to be leaders in the world in machine tool technology? and change to where we've dramatically reduced our overall market share. And the article that's above it kind of starts to give you some of the reasons for that. So they're talking about how the Defense Department's getting involved and in looking at issues with China and rare, rare earth magnets. And so the reality today is China's got 60% of that market. So when you look at core things that we need in, in, in motors, um, especially whether that be for you know, aerospace, you know, any application automotive, you know, rare earth magnets, 60% of the market controlled by the Chinese. And if they start putting restrictions on how much they're willing to export, major issue. And it's kind of a, hey, like, what are we really focused on long term when we're looking at government policy for things we should be narrowed in down and making sure we're competent and capable of here? As they're now noting in the area of machine tools, oh, by the way, taking a look at certain materials are pretty critical and core that you need to have in your arsenal to be able to do the things you need to do to drive your economy, to build the products you need, to build the defensive systems that you need to have at the end of the day. Also, to take a look at that in the news a lot, it's been issues with semiconductors. Automotive industry is having to slow up production because they can't get enough semiconductors. And they get, well, not semiconductors, cars. Well, if you look at it, average cars got about 100 million lines of code in it, 100 million lines of code. And that's 10 times what it was just a decade ago. And a high-end car has got closer to 500 million lines of code. So these guys need processors. And, you know, what you don't like seeing is the bandwagons all jumping on, well, Intel, they're yesterday's news, and we've got to go over to Taiwanese, you know, semiconductor manufacturing company over in Taiwan to have these things made. Let's go get those guys to go do it. Hey, you know, how about we focus on working on our core technologies here? Again, you want to talk about government policy and focus on things that are important, just running over to Taiwan to have your stuff made isn't going to be a great idea. It's how this whole reshoring issue got to be such a big deal. And I've been working with Harry Mosier for 10 years now on the reshoring initiative. And the current pandemic has made us see what's the problems when you don't have a good supply chain, when you decide to ship things all over the world to the cheapest labor wherever it can be. There's some core things you need to be able to make and manufacture on your own. There's certain materials you need to be able to have, certain processes you have to have at the end of the day. You can't just go ship things around. The whole idea of a couple of decades will become a service-based industry. And how's that working out? What, are you kidding me? Of course you need services to do certain things in the day, but you can't become a service. You have to make things. And how you make things are with machine tools and manufacturing technology. And you can't just go ship all that technology and try to get it sourced someplace else. Because when you really need it, all of what just happened in the last year, you find out you can't just go get it from where you want. you got to be able to take care of those things yourself. So... Why don't we start taking at some long-term ideas of like how we focus, just like DOE and DOE is starting to do, what are some of those core industries and areas that we should be focusing our time and attention? 
And this whole thing about ah, oh, government, you know, shouldn't be picking winners and losers. Hey, I got news for you. What do you think lobbyists do every single day affecting policy? Where do you think all that money goes out the door at the end of the day? All I'm suggesting is how about we have a little bit more focused policy so we can actually go apply for the long game, invest in those things that you actually have to have to have a strong, independent economy. You can get things made all over the world. Just don't be dependent on everything having to come from all over the world. We can sell all over the world. That's great. We can have partners and collaborate. That's great. But you got to have the capability yourself to be able to do it on your own. Build up the technology. Build up that capability. Don't keep chasing the cheap dollar all around the world. Make those things here. Let's have a focused government policy that looks at what are those industries? What are those technologies? What are those material sectors we need to be really good at? And let's focus and invest on them. So anyway, that's just from a day of reading Kiplinger letter. So who'd have thought? Anyway, I hope you don't mind the minor rant, a little bit of what's going on in the world. So uh, you guys have a great one. We'll back up next week. Talk to you again. We'll see you.